Hello guys, welcome back, PK here. So in this video, we're going to be working on this interesting viewer suggested integral using Parseval's theorem, so stay tuned. Okay, here's the question. The question is evaluate this integral from 0 to infinity x over shin of square root of dx dx. Like I said, we'll be eventually using Parseval's theorem. So we'll keep working on this until we have the summation from n is from 1 to infinity, 1 over n to the power of 4. But first, let's use complex form of the shin x. That is the same as e to the power of, now x, minus e to the power of negative x over 2. But then again, we have shin of square root of dx on your denominator. So that's why shin of square root of dx is the same as e to the power of square root of dx minus e to the power of negative square root of dx over 2. Okay, so using this, let's rewrite this integral, right? So let me call this integral as the i. Okay, then your integral i is the same as, let's pull this 2 out. Okay, so i is the same as 2 times integral from 0 to infinity still. Okay, then that of x over e to the power of square root of dx minus e to the power of negative square root of dx. And then we have dx. And then I'll be multiplying e to the power of negative square root of dx to both the numerator and denominator. So your i is the same as then 2 times integral from 0 to infinity of x times e to the power of negative square root of dx. Okay. That over uh, 1 minus e to the power of negative 2 times square root of dx, and we have dx. Okay, then if you rewrite this i a little bit, so it is just the same as 2 times integral from 0 to infinity. Let me just write this numerator first. x times e to the power of negative square root of dx. That times 1 over 1 minus e to the power of negative 2 times square root of dx dx. And we will be focusing on this fraction. So it looks like this fraction is related to infinite geometric sum. So that is about 1 over 1 minus e to the power of negative 2 times square root of the x. Okay, so if you call your common ratio r as e to the power of negative 2 times square root of the x, this whole expression is just going to be the same as summation from n is from 0 to infinity of just e to the power of negative 2 times square root of the x to the power of the n. So that's why we can just rewrite this as summation from n is equal to 0 to infinity of e to the power of negative 2 times n times square root of the x. Okay, so using this, let's rewrite this integral i, right? So your integral i is looking like 2 times integral from 0 to infinity of still the same, x times e to the power of negative square root of the x. And at that time, this whole summation from n is from 0 to infinity of e to the power of negative 2n times square root of the x. And then we have dx. Okay, then let's pull this summation sign outside of the integral and multiply those two exponential terms. Then your integral is looking like 2 times summation from n is 0 to infinity. Okay, then that times integral from 0 to infinity of x times. And then let me multiply these two exponential terms. Then it looks like e to the power of negative square root of the x, that times 1 plus 2n. Of course, we have dx. Time to use u substitution. And let me call your u as that whole thing. Square root of x times 1 plus 2n. Okay, then your du. du is going to be the same as 1 plus 2n. That times 1 over 2 times x to the power of negative 1 over 2 times dx. So that's why let's represent your dx, right? So from this, your dx is just the same as du over just the whole thing. 1 plus 2n over 2 times square root of the x. So this whole thing is just the same as 2 times square root of the x 
over 1 plus 2n. And then we have du. So using this u substitution, let's rewrite this integral i. So your integral i is just looking like still 2 times summation when n is from 0 to infinity. And then we have x times e to the power of negative square root of dx. And that times this whole thing. 2 times square root of dx over 1 plus 2n. And then we have du. Okay, we still have some x terms, right? So we set u as square root of dx times 1 plus 2n. So that is why first, then square root of the x is just the same as u over 1 plus 2n. So that's why your x has to be u squared over 1 plus 2n squared. Okay, so using them, our integral looks like 2 times summation when n is from 0 to infinity. Okay, then that of u squared. u squared over 1 plus 2n squared. Okay, then that times e to the power of uh, negative u. And then that times... 2 times u over uh, 1 plus 2n squared. And of course, we should have du. Okay, so this is an expression we derived from last step about the integrand. But we should remember we need to multiply 2 to this. So multiply 2 to this and rewrite your integral. That should be the same as multiply 2 and 2 and pull this out. So 4 times summation from n is 0 to infinity. Okay, then that of integral from 0 to infinity of everything. u squared times u, that is u cubed, times e to the power of negative u. That over 1 plus 2n to the power of 4. And then we have du. So let's also rewrite this so that we can use the gamma function, right? So this is the same as then. 4 times still summation from n 0 to infinity. Okay, then that of, let me make a bracket and pull this fraction out, 1 over 1 plus 2n to the power of 4. Okay, then that times integral from 0 to infinity of, if you rewrite this, right, the numerator form, this is the same as, u cubed is the same as u to the power of 4 minus 1. That times e to the power of negative u, and then we have du. And then close your bracket. And let's focus on this integral part. This looks like a gamma function, right? So this is the same as gamma of 4. And we will be using how gamma of n plus 1 is n factorial. So that's why this gamma 4 is the same as now then 3 factorial, which is equal to 6. So let's multiply 6 and 4. And that is now 24 times summation from n is 0 to infinity of only this fraction. 1 over 1 plus 2n to the power of 4. This is the only expression we should evaluate. Okay, then like I said, our goal is to use Parseval's theorem. So we should have the summation from n is 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the power of 4. So let's first analyze the summation. So the summation from n is 0 to infinity of 1 over 1 plus 2n to the power of 4. Okay, so let's list up some terms. So this is the same as 1 over 1 to the power of 4 plus 1 over 3 to the power of 4 plus 1 over 5 to the power of 4 plus and so on. And then let me just think about this summation from n is. So this is the same as 1 over 1 to the power of 4 plus 1 over 2 to the power of 4 plus 1 over 3 to the power of 4 plus and so on. So that is why this expression, this summation that we are looking for, this summation is just the same. So let me just write it down again. So summation from 0 to infinity for the n of 1 over 1 plus 2n to the power of 4. Okay, then this is just going to be the same as this summation from n is 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the power of 4. And then we can only subtract those terms, 1 over 2 to the power of 4, 1 over 4 to the power of 4, 1 over 6 to the power of 4. If you subtract those terms from this summation, then you will end up with this summation that we are looking for. So that minus 
1 over 2 to the power of 4 plus 1 over 4 to the power of 4 plus 1 over 6 to the power of 4 plus and so on. And then this expression has to be just the same as 1 over 16. That times summation from n from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the power of 4. So we can just double check, right? So this is the same as 1 over 16 is now 2 to the power of 4. And then we already know this whole thing is 1 over 1 to the power of 4 plus 1 over 2 to the power of 4 plus 1 over 3 to the power of 4 plus and so on. So this is just the same as 1 over 2 to the power of 4 plus 1 over, now this has to be same as 4 to the power of 4 plus 1 over then 6 to the power of 4 plus and so on. Okay, so we can represent this nicely once again. So the summation that we are looking for, summation from n 0 to infinity of 1 over 1 plus 2n to the power of 4. Okay, then this is just the same as summation from n from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the power of 4. That minus this summation, minus 1 over 16 times summation the same. n is from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the power of 4. Okay, then now it is all about what has to be the value of the summation from n is equal to 1 to infinity, 1 over n to the power of 4. We'll be using Paul's first theorem. About this Paul's first theorem, I don't want to get my video too long, so I'll be just introducing this theorem briefly. It says 1 over pi times integral from negative pi to pi f of x squared dx. That is 2 times a naught squared plus summation from n is 1 to infinity a n squared plus b n squared. And then those are a naught, a n, and b n, right? So we'll be using this summation from n is from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared is just equal to pi squared over 6. We'll be using this. And then let me use your f of x as x squared. Then we can talk about the summation from n is 1 to infinity, 1 over n to the power of 4. Okay, so if you work this out, uh, first of all, a naught. So a naught was this, 1 over 2 pi times integral from negative pi to pi, f of x dx, right? So this is going to be the same as then uh, 1 over 2 pi. Okay, then that times integral from negative pi to pi of just the x squared dx. This is easy to evaluate this. So this has the same as 1 over 2 pi. That times now 2 pi cubed over 3. So cancel this out, also out. So it is just a pi squared over 3. And for this a n, I'll leave this an for the practice for the viewers, but you can just use integration by parts for two times. Then we'll just end up with this an as four times negative one to the power of n, that over n squared. And clearly this bn has to be zero because your integrand is an odd function. Then putting all of these together, the Parseval's theorem is stating that this whole thing, right? So plug it in x squared, to this f of x, right? And then the right hand side has to be then 2 times pi square over 3. Okay, then that square. And then plus summation from n from 1 to infinity of 4 times negative 1 to the power of n. That over n squared. The whole thing square. Okay, then this is going to be the same as. Uh, this is the same as 2 times pi to the power of 4 over 9. And then the right hand side, this is only going to be 4 times negative 1 to the power of 2n. This is just a positive one always, right? And n squared squared, that is n to the power of 4. So that's why this is the same as, let me pull the 16 out. 16 times summation from n is from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the power of 4. That we are looking for this, right? And about this left hand side, this is just going to be the same as then 1 over pi. 1 over pi times 2 pi to the power of 5 over now 5. Okay, so we can cancel this out. So it should be 2 times pi to the power of 4 over 5, right? So that is your left hand side. So putting all of this together, we are now working on 2 times pi 
to the power of 4 over 5. This is equal to, this right this side, 2 times pi to the power of 4 over 9 plus 16 times summation from n is 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the power of 4. Now we are looking for the summation. So making a calculation for this, right? So this 16 times summation from n is 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the power of 4. Okay, then this is just going to be the same as 18 minus 10. That is 8 times pi to the power of 4. That over 45. Okay, then let's divide both sides by 16. So summation from n is from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the power of 4. This is going to be just the same as pi to the power of 4 over 90. What we need to get is this 24 times bracket summation from n is 1 to infinity 1 over n to the power of 4. That we know the value of this as pi to the power of 4 over 90 minus 1 over 16 times, also the same summation, right? So we are working on 24 times of this minus 1 times pi to the power of 4 over 90. So let's work this out. It is the same as 24 times. Okay, so 15 pi to the power of 4 over 16 times 90. Let's cancel out the terms. Okay, so 16, 24, cancel out, and then we have cancel out. Right. And then we have cancel out. So eventually what we have is now pi to the power of 4 over 2 times 2, 4. So pi to the power of 4 over 4 was the answer for this question. Okay, so pretty interesting integral using Parsifal's theorem. How amazing.